Thanks for joining us tonight on Behind the Spotlight. All right, country music fans, when was the last time you actually met or listened to a country artist who actually lived out in the country, worked, uh, was a farmer, and did all of these things with his life? Not very many out there, but Lyle Strickland is one of them. <laughs> I'm, I'm pumping you up to oh, make I you a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for being in Thanks for having us. me, yeah, absolutely. So you are from Buffalo, Missouri. Mm -hmm. This is how you say it, it's Missouri. Yeah. At some point, <laughs> we, what, what you've told me is that you drive past a certain like county line or something and you, you go from Missouri to Missouri. Yeah, I think that's, uh, at least for me anyway, so I'm sure there are some people back home that would argue with me. But Well, we're going to go with it. Okay. We, be we believe you. <laughs> okay, um, Lyle, so we're going to kick off the show with um, one of the songs off of your new album, mm -hmm. and it's called Hotel Maid. Yep. Okay, and your new album is called? Preservation. Okay, Lyle yeah. Strickland, everyone. Quarter million dollars don't buy that much Gonna need a hundred more to keep my daddy's place up In three years the taxes have gone unpaid And my girl pulls her weight as a hotel maid I left the farm for a year or two Bought a half education that I'll never use now papers in the desk will never sit Got a whole new group of associates But you can't spend your way out of nothing That's a big hole and you'll never climb out But if you got a long handle On that shovel in your hands yeah, I might hit a rock and you'll know where you stand Broke a piece of glass from the fist last night But I never really meant it to cause a fight Now there's some times when I lose my mind And I know when I do that I'm not so kind I thought about leaving a time or two But the only good thing I got in this world is you now I can get lost and I can be free But there's no telling what it'll end up costing me But you can't spend your way out of nothing That's a big hole and you'll never climb out But if you got a long handle on that shovel in your hand I might hit a rock and you'll know where you stand yeah. A quarter million dollars don't buy that much Gonna need a hundred more to keep my daddy's place up If three years of taxes have gone unpaid And my girl pulls her weight as a hotel maid. That was Hotel Made by Lyle Strickland. We're so pleased to have you. Absolutely. Thanks for Thanks. hanging out with us all day. Oh, it's been a pleasure. So, okay, Hotel Made is, you know, if you listen to the lyrics, it's about kind of struggling to make ends meet, um, even despite having an education. Sometimes mm -hmm. you go to school, you rack up all that student debt, and you don't start off in your dream career. Yeah, yeah, you gotta do something to keep the lights on. So. Mm -hmm. Was yeah. any of that personal experience? Um, uh, some of it. Um, so you personally were not a hotel maid? <laughs> no, I was not, I was not. Um, no, struggling to kind of make ends meet and keep the farm together uh, was definitely my experience, but uh, uh, I was fortunate enough to um, uh, work on the farm and, and uh, play guitar. So the farm kind of kept you busy and fed yeah yeah and i didn't have too much to um uh, worry about responsibility wise you know so that was that was nice but um but it's hard for a lot of people um and it was it was difficult you know the first few years too to uh keep the fences up and 
keep the taxes yeah, you paid. You said and, it was it yeah. was kind of in a state of disrepair a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, it had been quite a bit since anyone had really done big major work on the farm. So Kept up, which, which for those of you who don't know, uh, Lyle actually does run and take care of a farm raising cows, yeah, taking grass, care of cows. Yeah, grass-fed uh, organic beef and uh, um, yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. And then also you have a, a newer endeavor, which is a coffee shop, right? Yeah, I was off tour last year. Um, and uh, um, usually the winters are pretty slow for the music. There's sure. not a whole lot of shows. And uh, the farm probably shouldn't be slow, but it's awful cold and I don't like to get out there. So um, I don't blame you. <laughs> yeah. No, not at so, all. So the winters are um, uh, a little slow there, too. And my mom uh, and I decided to uh, open a coffee shop on the square in Buffalo. So. I love it. So yeah. we've got a we've got a singer songwriter, a farmer and a coffee connoisseur in the <laughs> house. He, we, a man of many talents and we're going to dig into his story a little bit more here in a little bit. Don't go anywhere. Where'd he go? Where's that man? One with the smiling eyes, the one day Welcome back to Behind the Spotlight. So I really want to get more into your background because it's not every country music artist that has actually grown up on the, you know, on the countryside, mm -hmm. raising cattle, working on a farm. Tell us about what that was like for you out in, in Buffalo, Missouri. Well, um, I don't know, it gave me a lot to, to write about. Um, I do uh, think it's important to draw from something that's authentic and, and real. Um, you know, there's a lot of guys that, that uh, grew up around it, but it seems like they've been uh, a while since they've have been mm -hmm. back. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, um, that, and that's something that you've, you know, sort of touched on is that for a while you didn't really want to identify as a farmer. Yeah, I was uh, like a lot of kids, I think, in small towns, you know, you want to hit that city limits sign as quick as you can uh, after high school. And um, I made it all of about 30 miles away and mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> couldn't see the so stars. You went to college. Yeah, you went yeah. to college. Mm -hmm. You went to Missouri State. Yep, got a film degree there. And, Studied uh, film. Uh, it was wonderful, um, but it was weird not being able to like, you know, see the stars. And I was driving out in the country to smell fresh cut hay and I've got pretty bad hay allergies. So that was a bit of a quandary. That's so but. interesting. It, it's like, it's kind of like the things that you really take for granted all of a sudden later that it's like the comfort of home, mm -hmm. but it's also, it sounds like it's a, it's just a big part of your identity. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, it's weird. It's, it wasn't, um, so much something I was struggling against when I think mm -hmm. back on it. Um, it was just a little different way of doing it. You know? What made you finally embrace, you know, like I, I am from Buffalo. I love this town and this is who I am and I can write about yeah. this. What made you finally embrace that? I think when I, when I realized I could, um, uh, be on the farm and, and do it the way I wanted to do it and, uh, not necessarily follow the crowd on stuff. And I could appreciate the land the way I like to appreciate it. Um, really yeah. made a big difference, you know, not to have to follow one um, Path, set yeah. way of like, this is how you farm, you know. Yeah, it, um, there's not one way, you know, this is how you pursue music, this is how you farm. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it, it's interesting to me that you have so many different parts of you that you've kind of learned to incorporate. Yeah, yeah, everything has to kind of work together. Um, you know, my, my mom's side of the family um, on the uh, Strickland side, they were all farmers, and, and my grandmother's side were uh, all really heavy into music, so I'm kind of wow. just folding it into That's so <laughs> well, <laughs> together. Well, you are a seventh generation, you know, part of your family that's been living in Buffalo, seventh generation farmer. Yeah, we've been there a long, long time. Uh, it's always kind of uh, hard when you like, when you go out and there's, um, people have these uh, identities, um, you know, from their families and, and where they came from and these groups of people, and you're like, I've just I've kind of been sitting in the Ozarks for a good long bit, so. <laughs> so what, well, was there pushback on that? You know, to be like, you have to take over the family farm. No, I, it was uh, my family was super supportive of uh, of my music, and and um, when the it was sort of a question of who was going to take over the farm, or if anyone was going to take it over, it was just going to be kind of um, scattered to the wind. Um, I stepped up and and um, told them I'd take it over and run it, and. Um, so it's sometimes it's I think of it as a more of a duty, I guess, uh, hmm. kind of thing, you know, um, just to kind of keep that tradition alive. But so. it sounds like it has also influenced a lot of your music and allowed oh, yeah. you to be creative. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's a really wonderful place, especially when you're on the road to come back and sit in the woods and center out and and kind of um, 
figure out what matters in life, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, you get a really keen sense for it when you're surrounded by trees and grass. You know, Absolutely, so. and the stars and yeah. porch time. Yes, right. Oh, yes. So this is so this is a, <laughs> I I've, I thought I invented this, um, I, but it, it's just it's just porch time. You just you sit on mm -hmm. the porch and kind of ponder yep. life, and that's when some of the best stuff comes to you. I know that part of your process is waiting. Yeah, you got to let things kind of stew uh, around for a little bit until they're ready to um, be served, and uh, yeah, kicking a kicking the boots up on the rail on the porch and. Um, just having it quiet, slowing down, you know, mm -hmm. taking a deep breath. There's so much stuff that just hits you every day mm -hmm. and having some time to um, take some deep breaths and think about what, what you really need in life and what really matters. And tell us a little bit more about that songwriting process. So it sounds like, you know, you kind of go, 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 things build up, and then at some point you have to release it. And yeah. has that how, is that how it's always been for you? Because you've been songwriting for a long time. Yeah, no, it, when I was younger, it... Um, uh, you know, I, I would write all the time and constantly, you know, and mm -hmm. it was just practice. But I was, I, I was almost like I was writing so much that um, I was just writing stuff that wasn't really from a deep place, you know. But I got a lot of great practice. But uh, uh, these days, yeah, it seems to kind of, um, you know, come in and, and sit for a while and, and work itself out. And then, well, then when I do start writing, it just pours out. Well, know? and I like, I like hearing that, that you... I like hearing you talk about depth because so much country music is about, you know, drinking a beer, getting yeah. in a truck, <laughs> got my girl, got my dog, um, mm -hmm. you know, parties, and it sounds fantastic. I, I, I experienced my first party barn not that oh, long yeah. ago. Yep. Um, did not know that was a thing out in Kearney, Missouri. It was beautiful. We mm -hmm. saw shooting stars. I mean, we sat outside. Was there some of that for you too? Oh yeah, yeah. Um, and there's always a place for that kind of stuff. Absolutely. You know, you listen to those songs and. And that's definitely a part. It's I think the problem comes is when there's only those songs. You know, exactly. you're kind of sitting around with your buddies. You know, when they're beat tired at 3 p.m. because they started at 3 a.m. and you're kind of sitting around going, "Man, when do these guys have time to go down to the river every day?" Yeah. You know? well, someone's got to be working, right? Yeah. You know? um, so yeah, I think there's a place for all of it, but. Uh, um, but you, it sounds like you really wanted to write about the other side of the coin, which is. Also, there's a lot of really hard workers. There are mm -hmm. people who are not making any money. Yeah, and they're doing the best they can, you know, and they're, uh, you know, just working too hard for too little, um, just trying to get by and not complaining about it, you know. I mean, they Absolutely. just, um, when they probably should be, you know, but they just, uh, you know, got hard jobs, you know. Do you think there are a lot of country music artists who explore that side of farm yeah, life? Yeah, I do. I mean, yeah. there's, uh, they're out there. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. you got to search a little bit to find them. But uh, when I play across the country, you know, I've got tons of friends that tour around. And it's sort of underneath the radar. But mm -hmm. um, but uh, I think it's changing a little bit, hopefully. You know. Yeah. Well, well I think for a lot of people, music is very escapist. Mm -hmm. So it is nice to, you know, on a Friday night, what are you going to be blasting in your car? I yeah. understand, you know, I, it's the mm -hmm. weekend. I want to I want to be listening to a song about the weekend and relaxing. <laughs> so, but on the other hand, in between all of those great moments, there are these moments where you're like, okay, what am I doing with my life? You know, where am I going? Yeah, there's Friday and Saturday, and then there's Sunday through Thursday, you know. Um, Absolutely. So. And, you, and you do have some interesting struggles that you've kind of talked about a little bit. Um, first of all, I really am so so curious to know how you've dealt with sleep paralysis. Oh. <laughs> this is something that people, th this is a, a really weird phenomenon that some people experience where yeah. you basically are stuck in a nightmare and you can't do anything about it. Yeah, it's pretty frightening. You're just, uh, uh, your eyes are open and you can hear things. And the uh, only way I describe it is like, <clears throat> it's like superseding a nightmare on actual information that's coming in. Um, and so, yeah, it's pretty frightening, but. Uh, yeah, it's been a little while since I've had an episode, but uh, happened on the road a few times, and and you know about five years ago it was pretty bad. But so yeah. does that does it get worse with stress? Because I'm curious that the problem with sleep paralysis is that there's not really a proper treatment for it. Mm -hmm. Even even diagnosing it, I think, is really tricky. Yeah. And I just imagine you going, going, going. You're on the road. You need to be able to perform for a show, and you haven't slept because yeah, you've had you know these terrible yeah, if you're stressed and. Yeah. It uh, stress seems to at least for me anyway. You know, I'm sure everyone's different, but uh, yeah, stress for me uh, contributes to it. And then you don't sleep. Uh, you have an episode, and then that's frightening. So you don't sleep more, and just like spirals. You know. Wow. How but, do you uh, navigate that? Uh, I have to be really pretty in tune to uh, uh, 
what I need, you know. Being a songwriter doesn't hurt things, you know. Mm -hmm. You're constantly kind of going like, how do I make my life like calm and peaceful and, and um, explore things, you know. But you gotta be in tune. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Yeah. Has it made you kind of um, a little bit more in tune with yourself? Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to decide whether it's, uh, whether it's that in life or just getting older, you know. You're, <laughs> You're calming down. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it's like, it's like maybe, <laughs> maybe I shouldn't stay up till the sun comes up. You know? Just, but. just getting better habits, calming <laughs> down. Maybe the hormones are like, oh, yeah. that's hilarious. <laughs> that is one way to look at it. Maybe you know, it would be nice if, if everybody grew out of it. But for some people, they don't, yeah. and it's, it's very terrifying. There are a lot of adults who struggle with that, and yeah. it's just a really weird. It's like, it's like nightmares. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a frightening thing is the only way I can describe it. Just, yeah. yeah, that's crazy. So, so where do you want to um, go from here? I know that you have, uh, your new album is out now, mm -hmm. um, and you collaborated with Robbie Turner. Yeah. Who um, plays the steel pedal. Yeah, pedal steel. The pedal steel, um, yeah. the pedal steel, <laughs> which is a new instrument. It's not a new instrument, it's new to me. <laughs> um, so I was thinking he was like a percussionist, and I was thinking, would yeah. you consider it? It's a percussive. Um, you know, it's kind it's of its true. own thing. It's, it's a thing. it's a magic little instrument that it's magical. Uh, every uh, you know, there's I don't know, handful of pedals that your feet move up and down and change the tone, and your knees go side to side. It changes the tone up down. Crazy. So it's it's a very intuitive instrument, and he's a master at it. Well, um, he's amazing because he has he's performed with the Dixie Chicks. He's mm -hmm. gone on tour with them. Uh, Robbie Turner is currently with Chris Stapleton. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So. Tell us about your collaborating with him. Yeah, it was uh, incredible. He, um, we had uh, most of the boys that played on it, uh, we cut it in Springfield, Missouri, and then we drive down to Nashville for Robbie to put that pedal steel on. And uh, I was really looking for a cohesive sound, and the songs are kind of, um, oh, they kind of live in different spaces uh, musically. And so uh, that pedal steel plays on every song, and it just kind of puts a ribbon through every song and ties them all together. Um, huh. So yeah, it was, it was a really great experience. But. That's pretty, yeah. that's pretty good. Was it inspiring in a way to kind of work with somebody who yeah, had so much experience? Yeah, it was hard because his, yeah. his parents played um, uh, pedal steel for uh, Hank Williams. So, I mean, he's like wow. got a long line of, of uh, amazing uh, stuff going on. But uh, yeah, so I just kind of like handed them my songs and said like, whatever you want to like, do. Like, what would you do <laughs> with this to make it yeah. sound, yeah. And so, uh, yeah, he listened to him once and then and then played uh, through and we took uh, the first cut on just about every song. Um, he nice. just the master. You know, yeah, yeah. He was crying to a few of them and, and just he oh. feels it really really well. So that's amazing. It's an it's an amazing skill to develop yeah. to really connect with an instrument that way. Mm -hmm. Do you think? Um, like what would be your dream scenario because you have a lot going on you've got the coffee shop you've got the farm you've got music being on the road <laughs> yeah. so what would be your dream scenario because it's a lot to handle for one person yeah yeah it keeps me pretty busy um i mean the end of the day i just want to play songs and and mm -hmm. sing songs um but uh and write them but sounds like you have a connection though you really want to stay connected to the land as well yeah i mean you've got to have a home base that you know grounds you um in a place you're from that uh that inspires you, even if you're not, even if you don't have a home base, you know, and you're just traveling around, you still have to have an identity, you know. Absolutely. So, yeah. Well, yeah. thank you so much for sharing your identity with us. Yeah, well, thank you. We've got more coming <laughs> up after this. Don't go away. I left the farm for a year or two, bought a half education that I'll never use. Welcome back to Behind the Spotlight. We've got Lyle Strickland here, and we do have one more song for you. It's called Clyde and His Clippers, which mm -hmm. I love the backstory with this one. Yeah, it's, uh, it's about a little uh, barbershop in the hometown square in Buffalo, Missouri. So. In Buffalo, Missouri. Yeah. I love how you say that. <laughs> okay, um, before we get into that, how can everyone find your music? Uh, LyleStrickland.com, uh, Facebook, Instagram, Spotify, iTunes, all that fun stuff. All right, so. he's, he is all over it. Okay, this is Lyle Strickland with Clyde and His Clippers. Clyde and his clippers messing up the floor Been cutting the boys' hair since spring of 54 Not anymore Sure wasn't no big dream, tiny little store But it kept him fed and kept him honest to the core 
not anymore Ghost on the sidewalk wearing pretty thin Just wasting away waiting for folks to come back in Saying where you been, how you been my friend Lost his business when the big box came in But he didn't close her down, just took it all on the chin And now where you been? Shopping and groceries and banking held within Even got a little hair place with two chairs like twins And now where you been? Ghost on the sidewalk, oh, wearing pretty thin. Just wasting away, waiting for folks to come back in. Saying, Where you been? How you been, my friend? Cloud and his clippers up on every day till two Not that it matters cause they all just pass right through And now what'd you do?